Hi, everybody. I'm Richard Roberts, and welcome to the Expect a Miracle weekly podcast. And by the way, somebody is receiving a healing in the back of your right leg right now, even where you have pain down below your knee and your calf, you're being healed right now. Now that's an operation of the word of knowledge. And whoever you are, I wish you'd call us at the Abundant Life Prayer Group at 918-495-7777. Give a testimony. Let me know what God is doing. Welcome to our TV studio here. We've been making our TV programs and I thought, well, you know, I'm here. Let's do the podcast here today. Normally I do it upstairs, but uh, we're going to do it down here in the studio today. We've been taping our regular program, The Place for Miracles. And also my wife, Lindsay's program, Make Your Day Count, which is a wonderful women's program. Both are seen on the Victory Network as well as other places. And also we've been making a a new program for Daystar Espanol. Uh, Daystar Espanol is launching the 1st of November and uh, we will be on it. And they're starting in, I think, I think as I heard right, about 15 million Hispanic homes. And uh, it'll be launching out in America and then in Canada and then especially down into uh, uh, Mexico and uh, Central America and even down to South America and hopefully one day to Spain. So thank God for that. So I'm in my studio today. I've been busy. Uh, last week we had a wonderful pastor's conference uh, live via Zoom out in the, well, almost in the middle of nowhere it seems like, out in a place called Karta, or Kata, which is in Pakistan. It's uh, very near the Afghan border and the Iranian border, way, way out there, almost in the middle of nowhere in western Pakistan, about 500 pastors. I ministered to, minister to them for three or four hours live uh, via Zoom, and I'm doing that more and more. So far, in the last six months, I think I've ministered personally to more than 22,000 pastors in nations all over the world, and I thank God for that. Now, I want to take a few minutes today and and just be myself. Is that okay? Now, you may be just listening, you may be watching, but let me just, I don't have much hair to let down, but let me let down the hair I've got today, okay? And talk to you for a little while about living with kingdom purpose. Now, I'm not talking about worldly purposes. I'm talking about living a life of purpose, having a purpose, having a meaning, For your life. And in order to do that, let me go back into the Bible. Uh, Talk about the Apostle Paul, who first was named Saul, and then he changed his name. But for the sake of this message, I'm going to call him Paul all the way through. Paul did not start out as a Christian missionary. No. He started out as a ruffian, (laughs) as a zealot. He was hell bent on arresting Christians and jailing them and even killing them if possible. And if you read the Bible in the book of Acts, you'll find that he was the one who held the coats of those who stoned Stephen, the apostle, to death. Now, you know, that's what you call an accessory to murder. Uh, the, the, The man who drives the getaway car for the people who robbed the bank get the same punishment as the ones who robbed the bank. Even though he didn't rob the bank, he just drove the getaway car. Well, Paul held the coats of those who stoned Stephen to death. So he was an accessory uh, to murder. But on his way to Damascus, for the very purpose I was talking about, persecuting the Christians, he met Jesus face to face. And when he did, his entire life was changed. He was born again. (laughs) And when he got into the city, his eyes were healed and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a change, what a change. What a change has come into his life. Soon, the persecutor became the persecuted. But he escaped. They led him over the wall in a basket and blessed him. (laughs) And uh, he escaped their wrath and he started in his new lifestyle. And years later, I think think estimates some 10 to 12 years later, he began his public ministry. Now let's fast forward now on into Paul's life. Now it's coming down down toward the end end of Paul's life. Now he's in a Roman prison and he's writing letters that would complete some two thirds of the New Testament. Uh, Most of Paul's best work was written (laughs) in prison. Nero, the Roman emperor, had given an order that anyone caught preaching, preaching Christ, would be imprisoned and maybe even executed. But Paul was compelled to do it at all costs. Well, certainly it was politically incorrect, but he did it. And today, 
Today we're seeing the beginning of the Nero spirit in America. In some places, Christians are being told they cannot worship. They're being told they can't sing. They can't raise their hands and praise God. They can't use the name of Jesus. It's ironic because at the same time, protesters and looters and criminals are freely allowed to do millions of dollars of damage, uh, you know, breaking and entering, and stealing to their heart's content, pouring milk on grocery store floors, throwing uh, things on uh, Van Gogh paintings and things like that. And it seems like there are many governors and many mayors who are afraid to stop them. <laughs> they talk about defunding the police. Well, that's one of the worst ideas ever. Oh, they could be stopped. It just takes a firm hand. It takes a strong decision and a firm hand. Listen to me, friends. This is the devil's attempt to shut the mouths of the believers. And this woke culture that we're dealing with today is saying, shut your mouth, stay in line, or you will be canceled. They want to silence any and all voices who disagree with them. However, the last time I read the Constitution, it guarantees free speech. Now make no mistake about it. We are living in the end times. If you read the Bible, in the book of Acts, you'll find that Peter and John were told not to preach or teach in the name of Jesus. But they replied, whether it's right uh, to listen to God or listen to you, you be the judge. We cannot help but speak of the things which we have seen and heard. The haters of Christianity are saying it differently today, but they're saying it. Don't preach to me. Don't tell me how to live my life. Just leave me alone. Let me live whatever lifestyle I want to live. Really, my friend, it's a spirit of lawlessness that was released in our nation about 12 to 14 years ago. Our government has banned prayer in schools, allowing our borders to be unsecured, created an anti-Christ spirit of cancellation that is attempting to choke the life out of people. So it begs the question, where do we stand today? Do we live the status quo or do we live the kingdom life? It's a risk, isn't it? Someone might say, well, I'm limited to what I can do because of, and then they list a litany of reasons. I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too young. Uh, I'm too isolated. I, I'm too sick. I'm too tired. Uh, I don't get out much anymore. And excuses just go on and on. It's, it's so easy to say I'm limited. Moses was limited at the Red Sea. And yet God spoke to him and said, take that shepherd's rod and lift it up. And then God parted those waters and two and a half million Israelites walked across on dry ground with the Egyptian army being drowned behind them. The three Hebrew young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were limited in the face of Nebuchadnezzar's threats. But when they were thrown into the fire of furnace bound, God loosed their bindings and they walked out without even the smell of smoke on them. Gideon was limited with only 300 soldiers against an army of 10,000 Midianites, and yet he carried the day. David was limited by his slingshot against Goliath. But when that stone catapulted from that slingshot, it hit the only uncovered part of Goliath's body. <laughs> Something entered his mind that had never entered his mind before. And the day was won. Elijah was limited on Mount Carmel when 450 prophets of Baal did their incantations and cut themselves and called their 1-900 numbers. And Elijah said, let him who is God be God. And the fire streaked down from heaven and consumed his sacrifice. And if you read the Bible, you'll find uh, Elijah did a pretty good job of taking care of the 450 prophets of the devil. Daniel was limited by lions. They were supposed to eat him. But instead of eating Daniel, they wound up devouring those who put him in. Noah was limited by an ark. It is said he floated a new venture while the entire world was in total liquidation. 
Hosea was limited by his desperate housewife. <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. And it looked like Jesus was limited as he hung on the cross. And the devil said, there, that's that. It's finished. But he didn't realize that Jesus was taking on the sin of the world. That he was taking the stripes on his back for your healing and mine. Well, our limitations. Our limitations are our opportunity to glorify God and to present the gospel to someone who needs it. I have a dream and vision in my heart of reaching 100,000 pastors a year. And if those 100,000 pastors touch, let's say, an average of 1,000 people in a year, that's 100 million people. And over 10 years, that would be a billion people touched by the gospel of Jesus. I have a passion for it. So I say to you today, time to check your motives. Time to leave your attitude at the door. Because we're in this together. We're part of a team. And there's no I in team. So let's quit splitting hairs over doctrine. Let's become one in the Spirit together. Let's stop fussing and fighting. Why are God's people always fighting and the enemy's people always arm in arm? Let's stop fighting. Stop disagreeing. Let's come together under the banner of Christ. The Bible says one can put a thousand to flight, but two can put ten thousand to flight. In other words, stop magnifying your limitations. Stop fussing and fighting and feuding, and let's launch out into the deep and let down our nets for a catch of souls for the gospel of Jesus. He said, you'll be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's do it. And listen to this. It's time to rejoice continually. Stop whining, griping, complaining. Paul rejoiced while he was in prison. And he would not ever even admit that he had been uh, held captive as a prisoner of Rome. No, he called himself a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can read it in the Bible. And the reason is because God had consumed his life. That's what I want. Now, you know, in the natural, it, it's, come on, let's face it. It's hard to rejoice when people have hurt you. And when they've accused you and when they've lied against you and when they've stolen from you. And in the natural, you wish you could, <laughs> well... You know what I mean. I'm sure. I'm sure that every time Paul was beaten, and he was beaten a lot. In fact, he lists the times he was beaten. Uh, when he was beaten, I'm sure getting even crossed his mind. I remember, oh my. You know, you, you put some things in the past, but still you remember. I remember when there were people who came against me with false accusations. Oh how I wanted to get even. I wanted to get even with them. Those accusa accusations, <laughs> I call them accusations, uh, they, were, they were in newspapers, they were online, really hurt me because they were lies. It wasn't true. And I was trying to figure out a way to get even and I did some research on those people and I found out some things they had done that were bad and I was ready to expose them and end their... <laughs> I told people what I was planning to do, and I began to pray, and the Lord spoke to me and said, if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. <laughs> so I put the sword down. I did not strike at them. I forgave them. Wasn't easy. Now, do I like suffering? No. <laughs> and I don't know anybody who does. I am against suffering, but I do know this. If you love Jesus... The world is going to hate you. I remember I was talking to my daughter, uh, Chloe, earlier today. I was reminding her of the time when she and her sisters were little, and we went into a restaurant here in Tulsa. And it's just Lindsay and me and the three girls, Jordan, Olivia, and Chloe, and we were having a nice dinner, and a man got up from his table and walked over to our table. I didn't know why. I thought maybe he wanted prayer. I, I didn't know. 
People do that. They come over, they want prayer, they want to say hello, or they want this or that, I want a photograph. And he walked over to the table and I looked up and he said, you don't have any idea how much I hate you. I looked at Lindsay, she looked at me. Our children were, Chloe was in a high chair. Uh, and he just turned and he walked, walked out the door. The people at the next table said, what did he say to you? And I, I told him what he said and, and the Mary, who was the owner of the restaurant, came in and, and she said, what did he say to you? And I told her and she said, well, I would have just hit him. I said, yeah, that's what the world would have done, Mary. But think about what he must be going through. Think about the misery. Think about his wife, what she must be going through, what his family must be going through. If he has that kind of attitude about me, what else is going wrong in his attitude? You got to get beyond that. You got to rejoice. And the reason I can rejoice, the reason is very simple, because I know who my Redeemer is. And I know that my Redeemer lives. I'm not worshiping a dead God. I'm worshiping a live God. So like the song says, why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows fall? Why should my heart feel lonely? And long for heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion. My constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. Funny thing about a sparrow. The Bible says that he sees even a sparrow fall. Something as seemingly insignificant as a little tiny bird. Well, if he sees that, then he sees you. And he knows who you are. He knows where you live. He knows what you're feeling, what you're going through right now. And in the authority of the name of Jesus, I come against the satanic aggravation and accusation and attack. I come against every sickness and every disease, every fear, every doubt. I come against anything and everything that would try to wreak havoc in your life. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I command it to come off. I declare and I decree healing sent to you. According to Psalm 107 verse 20, which says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I rebuke every demonic force that has opposed you, oppressed you, and tried to block you out in the name of Jesus. And I pray for the beginning of healing, restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm so glad you joined me today for this podcast. I do it each week, and it's a joy and honor to do it. If you need special prayer, the Abundant Life Prayer Group is ready to receive your call at 918-495-7777 or online, richardroberts.org slash prayer. I'll see you next time on the Expect a Miracle podcast. God bless. Have you checked out our YouTube channel? It's packed with videos that will build your faith for these challenging times. You can watch the latest programs, The Place for Miracles, and Make Your Day Count. Also, take a look at the encouraging messages from Lindsay's prophetic dream teachings. In addition, Richard has specific healing prayers you can use. It's all here on our YouTube channel. Just go to youtube.com slash Richard Roberts Ministries. And don't forget to subscribe.